looks pretty good. Okay. Ready? Ready? I forgot my, what do you call it? So hopefully this will go okay. Where was it at? Oh, yep. <laughs> don't, don't make me separate you two. <laughs> Can you hear me? We're good. Uh, all right, guys. Thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Eric, if you don't know. Most of you guys know me, so we'll skip the formalities. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I hear somebody. Hear little cat bells. So, oh, it's that guy. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <clears throat> so today we're going to talk about branding and um, the importance of branding and how do you develop your brand. Um, and some of the aspects that people probably don't think about when they think of branding. Um, so mediocrity is your opportunity, meaning that I read a quote somewhere that said uh, that the cost of uh, mediocrity is branding, meaning that if you are great at what you do, and ultimately everyone knows you don't have to market yourself, you, don't, you already are out there. Anybody that is, doing, is not doing what you're doing, is um, you're going to be in a better position than they are. So today's hyper market or hyper connected world, you know, everybody is on the internet. There's so much noise out there that you do not, you have to kind of break through. You have to figure out what, um, what it is that you're talking about and who it is that you're talking to. Um, <clears throat> so branding isn't just for anybody. I mean, just for, for entrepreneurs or, you know, Kim Kardashian or <laughs> like that. Um, it is for whoever has a business and whoever is trying to market themselves. And that, whether that be um, your personal brand or your business brand, um, you still have to somehow or some way cut through the noise. And with that, you want to be able to tell your story. So it's definitely uh, for everyone. You know, you have to understand what is it about you? What makes you special? What's your secret sauce? Um, <clears throat> you know, Austin is a, a oh, wait, how did that happen? Austin is a growing city. Um, there's a lot of people moving here. There's a lot of competition. There's a lot of noise. There's a ton of artists. <laughs> so uh, you have to set yourself apart. And the way you do that is by, you know, there's that saying that don't try and be everyone else because everyone else is taken. Be yourself. Um, there's only one you. Um, and your your specific brand is very particular to you. You don't um, have to necessarily go out and, and try and do what other people do. And we'll get into that a little bit more. Um, so whether you're a recent graduate seasoned professional or an aspiring artist, Cultivating your personal brand can open doors, create opportunities, and help you stand out in a crowded landscape. Question and answer part. <laughs> How many people here have worked on their brand? Okay. What is a brand? <laughs> it's a <laughs> I know. So you've done, you've done Mark. I mean, you've done branding work before, right? And you've talked to people when they ask you what is, or when you ask them what's your brand about, what do they usually say? I'm sorry. Well, yeah. yeah. But it's the face of what you're doing. Right, right, right. So most people, whenever I say, okay, tell me about your brand, they say, well, I have a logo. Um, <laughs> and that's like, okay, so tell me about your brand. Um, I usually tell people that the logo is, well, you know, they say logo. So I usually tell people that a logo is, if your brand was a house, your logo is your curb appeal. Like it has, it has something to do with it, but it is, it is not the structure of your brain. Um, <clears throat> it's, the, it's the color you paint at your house. It's how you cut, a logo is how you cut your grass. A logo is, uh, you know, what people recognize visually. Hello, you guys are late. 
No, I'm just kidding. Make your class. <laughs> Attention and the merits. So do you guys have any brand? You, you, so since you're late, you're going to get put on the, on the hot seat. How, are you guys artists or what do you guys do? Um, yeah, I'm a graphic and production designer. Okay. I'm an art director and a visual designer as well. Okay, okay. Are you guys in business for yourselves or just are you working for somebody? See, you're getting hot, so you're getting questions. Um, I was doing a contract role right now. I'm doing freelance. Okay. Have you worked on your own personal branding? Yes. Okay. Cool, cool. So what is a brand to you? Mm -hmm. Either one. You guys are both late, so. <laughs> he asked this question, too. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> um, I guess I don't a brand to me is a way you would represent like an extension of yourself or maybe to the world. Okay. So whether it be like a product or service or like um, aesthetic. I'll take that answer. Okay. I'll take that. And you, ma'am, what's your name? Veronica. Veronica. Um, what is your brand to me? I guess it's kind of like how you want to be perceived or identified more. Right, exactly. Um, so to quantify it, <clears throat> There's at least 15 ways in which you um, your brand touches your client. So your brand is every way in which you, as a business or um, as a personality, interact with whoever you are selling to or trying to promote yourself to. So how you speak to your client. If you're friendly, if you're familiar, do you remember their names? That could be part of your brand. Um, how you dress. Are you in a suit or as artists, you know? <laughs> Yoga pants. I'm gonna put that up there. How you covered overalls, things like that. Are you on time? Um, how do you deliver your services? Uh, the consistency is your product the same every time? Do you deliver them in a bag? Do you deliver them however you deliver them? Is it the same consistent service every time? Um, do you work out of a brick and mortar? Do you work out of your house or in a studio? Unfortunately, we don't have any studios left here. But you know, if you need a studio, sign up. Um, do you advertise or do you or is your following word of mouth? Is your product for an exclusive crowd? So these are things that, you know, if you think about it, um, these are all for different people or can be for different people. What is your product? How much is your product worth? Does it hold its value? So it's that specifically brand wise, you have to think about that. Um, Jaguar recently sold their um, their brand to Ford a few years back. Um, they didn't sell <clears throat> any machinery. They didn't sell any buildings. They didn't sell any plans. All they sold was their name. So that tells you that a brand has value and a brand name has value. They don't necessarily want all the other stuff. All they said they wanted was the name that they can use. They can create their own product, but that name had, had name recognition had value. <clears throat> how fast do you get back to your clients and they contact you? Do you get an email and wait three days to send it back? That is, again, tells a story about you. So all these things are telling, are telling your client or your, whoever you're dealing with something about you. Um, do you have a website? Do you have a logo? Do you have brand colors? Do you use your brand marks consistently? So if you are trying to develop consistency and you were using a different color logo in here, a different color logo in different spaces and, and not having consistency, you're creating, you're creating confusion. And as always, a confused client does not buy. <clears throat> so these are at least 14 ways that your brand touches your clients and your potential clients. All these points of contact create a story. And it might not be a readily told story, but you feel it when you're the client. You feel it if that person is late, or you feel it if that person does not answer the email on time. You feel it if you are getting different services every time you go in. Um, <clears throat> and that then still creates a, 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 a brand, whether our story, whether that story is good or bad, that story is getting told. <clears throat> Start with why. There's a book by Simon Sinek. Um, called Start With Why. It's a very, very good book to read about if you are going to start building your brand. Start With Why tells, says that people don't care what you do. They don't care about how you do it. But if, they, if you can express why, then you, why you do it, then you tap into something special. Um, 
Somebody give me a brand that they enjoy, that they like. Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. Okay. That is a very well-known brand. Why do you like Coca-Cola? Because of the taste? It's good and it's refreshing. It's okay. Because of that sound. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is very much brand related. That sound is very much brand related. Um, some people might look at Coca-Cola as a commodity because it's just a cola. Um, some people might look at Coca-Cola because they do work in the community. They have their commercials always. Um, what's the uh, what's the song that they have? Um, it's a uh, every little something. Teach the world to sing. Do you guys remember? Am I dating myself? Give the world coke. Am I dating myself? You guys don't remember that commercial? Okay, huh? I, I feel old. Feel old. Feel old. Okay. So they, at one point, they were, they had this, uh, this campaign where they were, it was, I like to teach the world to sing. And it was, and, and it was about bringing fellowship together. So, you know, their why might have been bringing people together. And people, if you resonate with that, then obviously you're going to be like, oh, Coca-Cola wants to bring people together. I want to be part of that. And I'm going to go forward with that. <clears throat> it's the same thing with uh, Apple. We'll talk about that in a second. So how do you start to build your why? Um, so there are, this is um, a portion of, of a workbook that I created. Um, you guys will be able to download it if you like um, at the end of this. Um, and this is, this is kind of showing you how you start with your why statement. And your why starts with your internal values and passions and your internal talents. And then you have external forces. So the external forces might be motivational goal, motivations or goals, skills, and expertise. Let's pick on somebody. Uh, madam, give me a value that you might have. Me? Yeah. Um, or a passion, value or passion. I'm trying to figure out your why here. Uh, Put you on the spot. <laughs> like happiness, bring the pieces to the way. Okay. Is that a value or is that a talent or would that be? So, this, listen, when I do this with people, this is a very much a come to Jesus moment and a very much introspective moment. You have to really think about what you are, what your why is. Because once you develop that, and it doesn't have to be about <clears throat> what you're selling. It doesn't have to be about what you're trying to, to um, get people to buy. You know, it is, it is very much an internal type of struggle, so to speak. So if you were thinking about- Community. What would that- What do you mean? Well, I initially said like happiness or, okay. or people bring people joy. So you were trying to bring people joy. Yeah. Is that well, that? I think that a value would fall. The definition would be more of a community. You want to create. Community. You want to create community. Sure. <laughs> so I think goals would be to bring people joy, right? And community would be, uh, to create community would probably be, um, that could be a value. Yeah. So that, that, is, that's, that has an internal movement to it. Um, what about talents? Painting. Okay. Okay. Art. Okay. So art, art in general. So the different. So, so I was just about to get to that. The difference, thank you. <laughs> the difference is talents, I feel, are things that come innate to you, and skills are things that you work at and try to build on, right? So there's different things. Like, you can naturally be skilled as, a, as an artist, right? You can naturally be skilled as an illustrator. You can naturally be skilled as a painter. But at the same time, there are things that within that that you have to work on. 
like everything probably isn't coming to you like right away. So the difference between skills and talents are, that's why I say talents are internal and skills are external. Skills are things that you have to, or skills or expertise are things that you have to, to work on or learn, right? So things that you've learned along the way that might, um, be, that is usually different than a talent. And it's the same thing for um, passion and motivations. So values and passions are things that you grew up with and things that are innate in you, um, things that you, like, you could not be, you could have never been to Paris and you have a passion to go to Paris, right? So that's something that's just inside of you. Motivations might be, um, I want to do a, uh, a fellowship in Paris, <laughs> like our uh, esteemed colleague here. So that might be a motivation to say, okay, I saw Laura go to Paris. I want to go to Paris. That is a goal of mine now. Might be going next this year too, actually. <laughs> Actually, I might be going for a month, almost a month. Um, <clears throat> so those are the differences between like the skills and the skills and the motivation or skills in ex internal and external. So um, for this exercise, if you guys want to jot something down, that'd be great. Um, <clears throat> think about what your values and passions are. And you can just jot down words um, in the in. If you look at this, um, just jot down some words that are in the in the boxes. And then try to create a, a, uh, a cohesive sentence that kind of envelops all of that. You guys didn't know you'd be working, huh? Yeah, we'll go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Came here to listen. Simon Sinek also says something to the effect of there's two ways to, to uh, affect human behavior is to manipulate it or to inspire it. And I always thought that was very interesting. Um, and especially in the terms of branding, because one, do you manipulate your clients into thinking something or do you inspire them to think something? And I think the manipulation is kind of not devious, but it's not authentic. And if you can inspire somebody, I think that's a much more authentic and it creates a much more rabid fan or rabid uh, client. And don't feel bad if you don't figure this out or get this, because like I said, it is, there is some introspection here in it can be very soul searching. I feel like I'm back in teaching. <laughs> huh? The, the old days, I don't know how good they were. Anybody come up with anything? Anybody wanna share? See a lot of heads down. You mentioned authenticity. That would be a value. Yeah. If you feel like it is something that is innate to you, if it feels like if it feels like something that is just within you that you feel like if you are feeling fake or feeling inauthentic, then it just irks your soul, then that could, uh, yeah, it's very much for you, buddy. What are we thinking? Anybody got anything? See a lot of quiets. <laughs> there are no wrong answers. Wanting to do the very best for both ourselves and our clients. Okay, but it doesn't have to be. So your why doesn't have to be outward facing. So that's something that's really outward facing. Like you're thinking of, 
your client. Um, I, 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 I would challenge you to think of what is true to you and what is true. Not necessarily, it doesn't have to be about what you're selling, right? It doesn't, because you are thinking of something that is very personal to you. And I think that's where brand starts is understanding what that, what you are about. And once you get that understanding, then you can kind of go out and say, okay, I am, this is me. Now let me explain to you what my story is, right? So don't, don't think in terms of what my business is about. Think in terms of what you're about. Yes, ma'am. Maybe my why would be because I value beauty, mm -hmm. artistic expression, mm -hmm. and freedom. Okay. Like freedom to live my life. Like I want to be the creator of my own life. Right. You know, I don't want to be a slave to some job that I don't want. Right. I want to sustain. Mm -hmm. And now think about that in terms of who you are trying to attract, right? You have this understanding of yourself. So now you can say, okay, this is, this is who I am. So let me put that out into the world. And the people that resonate with that, the people that say, you know what? She's talking to me because that's me too, right? Those are the type of people that you would want to look for. You want to look for the people that resonate with that. And once they understand and internalize your why, that makes it much easier for them to buy from you. That makes it much easier for them to trust you. That makes it much easier for them to understand your motivations. So once you get that. <clears throat> so the difference in a competitive world, understanding your why is powerful. It gives you the brand purpose. Those that align with your purpose align with your brand. Those that align with your brand have a potential to become true fans. And a true fan will support what you do no matter what. Um, think about a band. Think about your favorite bands. If your favorite band puts out an album, you're going to go and buy that album. It could be something totally different from what they did the last album, but you're like, oh, no, I like this person. I like this band. I'm going to go check out this album. If they put out a t-shirt, I want the t-shirt. If they put out a poster, I want the poster because I resonate with that band. So if you think about it in those terms, how do you control, how do you control or create, excuse me, a true fan? Um, <clears throat> you start with, like Rosemary said, uh, she wants to find those people that want to live that free life. It's like Apple. Apple didn't set out to, ch or to build computers. They set out to change the world, right? And they have the most rabid fans in the world. They, um, <clears throat> so in the book, Simon Sink's book, he talks about Apple and he talks about the difference between Apple and between uh, Microsoft. Microsoft led with what they did. They wanted to create a, a, uh, an operating system. They wanted to create computers. They wanted to make things, they wanted to make those things, right? They're, they said, we are going to make the best computers possible. We're going to make the best operating system possible. Whereas Apple said, we want to affect change. We want to create culture. So when Apple came out with their, uh, what's the music player, iPod, people didn't bat an eye. They were like, oh, this is the next thing. I want this. Microsoft came out with a, with a um, Zoom. There you go. Nobody bought it. <laughs> Still rocking his to this day. It's like, why did I buy this? But the, the truth of the matter is, like, I think, um, I don't know if you guys know who uh, Wozniak is. He was one of the um, co-founders of Apple. And he was like, they're, they're the same product, really. It was just a matter of the fact that Apple positioned themselves to be um, effectors of change rather than computer makers, right? So if you think about that in terms of branding, it goes back to people don't care what you do, they resonate with how you do it. And if they can, again, if they can connect with that how, it's a much more visceral response to buying something. How many of you guys have ever bought something that you couldn't afford or you, you justified it 
you justified some way or another because you wanted, right? So if you can tap into that, that frequency with somebody's brain, again, they become that true fan. <clears throat> Will you say a word for each one of yours and then what your why is? My why? Yeah. Um, my why. My why is almost like it's a little bit like Rosemary. It was um, so I'm a photographer. Um, my why is to create um, beauty and to make people understand what they like. So I have a quote on my um, on my uh, website. And it says, <clears throat> something to the effect of uh, the beauty and the magic is not in, um, hold on, let me, I can't even think, you put me on the spot now. Oh, I, was on, I, was, I was in my own brain, hold on. Uh, good thing my website is back up. It is coming, it is coming. Yeah, thank you. So on, on the bottom of my website, it says, the appearance of things change according to the emotion and thus we see the magic and the beauty in them while the magic and the beauty um, are really in ourselves. So that's kind of that kind of resonates with my why. It's kind of my adopted why. So I want to be able to show people the beauty and the magic inside of them that they might not possibly see Right or show them the beauty and the magic inside of something that they might, po might possibly see. So that is kind of what my why is. Mission statement. <clears throat> um, so once you start to understand your why, you start to kind of realize you can kind of suss out what your mission is. Um, mission statement can be internal, can be external. You don't have to let people know what your mission statement is, as long as you have an understanding of where you're trying to go with it, right? Um, there's a hotel chain, I can't remember, I think it's the Marriott, a hotel chain that um, the CEO, they he basically turned the hotel around because he made all the employees memorize the mission statement. And their mission was to, you know, create better customer client relationships and all these other things. And so the, the employees had to be able to recite this. Right. And and with that, they internalized the mission. And if you can, again, it's a, it's a it's almost like a dominoes. If you start, if you build off your why, create this mission and internalize that mission, then you are much more stronger in, in your direction, in your path. That doesn't mean you're going to get it right the first time. There's always course correction. Right. You can always, you always set down a path and you're like, well, that didn't exactly work out. So let me figure out, let me course correct and figure out what it is. So Richard Branson, he is the guy from Virgin. <clears throat> he says, um, brevity is, is certainly key. You don't want a long mission statement. You don't want something that is, none of this should be super long and, and tedious. Brevity is certainly key. So. Try using the Twitter 140 character template when you're drafting your inspirational, inspirational message. You need to explain your company's purpose, your outline, expectations for the internal and external clients alike. Make it unique to your company, make it memorable, make it real. Just, uh, just for fun, imagine <clears throat> it on the bottom of a cult of arms. <clears throat> Excuse me. So he's saying, you know, have it readily available in your head. Have it have, be able to understand what your mission is um, and, and go forward with that. So here are some sample mission statements. Google's mission is to organize the world's information and make it universally acceptable and useful. So think about that in terms, these are all companies that you might or might, HubSpot I'm sure, maybe you guys might not know, but <laughs> the rest of them are pretty, pretty straightforward. So if you think about what Google is doing and you think about that in term, that mission statement in terms of how they, how you interact with Google, with the products they put out, things like that, it starts to make sense, right? They're trying to organize that information to make it universally acceptable. Um, HubSpot is a CRM that handles, uh, I don't know if you guys know what a CRM is, but they are software. <laughs> huh? Yeah, they do lead generation. They do, um, and they also allow you to do uh, software, I mean, uh, social media management. 
Um, to make your world uh, inbound, we want to transform how organizations attract, engage, and delight their customers. So that's their, their goal is to do that for you. Nordstrom's in, st in store or online, whatever there's new opportunities arise, Nordstrom's works relentlessly to give customers the most compelling shopping experience possible. The one constant John W. Nordstrom's founding philosophy offer the customers the best possible service, selection, quality, and value. So I remember when I was a kid, they used to have a piano player in Nordstrom's. And I thought that that was like the most bougiest thing. <laughs> but it, it fits their brand and it, it makes sense because they, they were trying to create this, this service and this, this experience, right? <clears throat> So they were building trust, they were building credibility. Um, your, your mission statement will do that for you. Trust in, uh, is the foundation of, successful, of a successful relationship. Think about any body that you spent money on. You either knew, liked, or trusted them. If one, if, if one or all those things weren't present, you weren't gonna spend money, right? If you walk down the street and you see a guy, hey, you wanna buy these watches? I don't trust that guy, I'm not gonna spend money. But if I know him, Possibly, but if I really know him, I'm really not going <laughs> to. So, you know, it's, uh, or you have to like the guy. If the guy comes up and tells you a joke and shows you the tricks and, hey, okay, I'll spend some money with you, right? So those three things, one of those three things has to be, has to be present in order for you to spend money. So how do you create that? <clears throat> Through your brand personality. So your brand does have a personality. Um, it might not necessarily be your personality, but you have to think about what your brand personality is going to be. Um, these are some dimensions. The dimensions are maybe the, the, the top line is what uh, the overall arching you know, feel of that brand is. And it could be a combination of, of, of all of those. It can be one, it can be two, it can be three. So if you want to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, if you want to, if your brand is about excitement and it's about, um, you know, it's daring, it's trendy, it's exciting, it's spirited, those things, you want to put that across in your brand. You want to have your brand speak to those things. So the way that you talk to somebody, um, hey, how you doing? Blah, blah, blah. You know, you, you get that, that, that excitement. You try and put the, all, those, all those qualifiers into how you, how you were talking to people. Brand position statement. <clears throat> Once you have your, um, your brand identity, who is this for? Targets a style on a budget. That is definitely talking to someone. <laughs> that is absolutely speaking to a person. Um, that person is uh, somebody that doesn't necessarily want to go to Nordstrom's, somebody doesn't want to go to a high-end store, but they still have style, they still like things that are fashionable, right? Volvo for the upscale American families. Volvo is the family, of, uh, is the family automobile that offers maximum safety. Again, they are speaking to directly to a person. They're speaking directly to an avatar. Um, <clears throat> that person, family, somebody with a family, um, somebody that, that prioritizes that family and wants them to be safe. And, and uh, that has always been Volvo's moniker is they are the safe car. Home Depot, the hardware department store for do-it-yourselfers. So this is interesting because Home Depot, if you go into Home Depot, you see a lot of, a lot of uh, contract workers. You see a lot of people in there. But those people are going to come no matter what because they know they have to go there, right? So <clears throat> Home Depot says, I don't want just the contract workers. I want to reach out to the people that think they're contract workers and <laughs> that, are, <laughs> that are working on their homes because we are the store for them, right? So they are speaking, again, to a very particular type of person. Client avatar. Hey, can I have a quick question? Yeah. Is your brand statement basically your tagline? Um, it can be, it doesn't necessarily have to be, but it, it definitely can be. I don't think I've ever seen style on a budget anywhere on, on Target's website or anything, but you know, I looked it up and was doing research and I was like, oh, this is, this is cool. So again, a lot of this stuff, it doesn't have to be your tagline, but it, it definitely can be. Yeah. 
client avatar. So you've figured out what your brand is. You figured out, now you have to figure out who these people are. So this is my little, I don't know if you guys know the airbender or, you know, you can pick up which, which one, whichever avatar you want. But how do you create a client avatar? Um, this is probably one of the most important things you can do. And it is probably one of the hardest things you can do because you have to really, I won't say it's hard. You can pick a person and the way I would do it is find out who your best client is, who your favorite client is, who the person is that you want to work with again and again and again, right? <clears throat> and you develop that, that avatar. You figure out, you know, if you're building this person from scratch, you give them a name, you give them the age, male or female, you describe them as best as possible. You, you develop this person as much as you possibly can. What their physical features are, what, they, what kind of style they are. Are they snappy dressers? Are they kind of relaxed? Um, you know, you can even go into uh, hobo chic. Are they, are they whatever, you know, whatever style. <laughs> That's the first thing that came to my mind. I don't know. <laughs> That's my client. <laughs> so are they married? Are they single? What kind of, what kind of, how many kids do they have? Do they have pets? Where do they live? They house, apartment, condo, what do they do for a living, what do their spouse do, what's their annual income? If you think about it, and you're thinking about this in terms of sales, these things become very important, right? Um, <clears throat> becomes important because of how you speak to them, it becomes important because are they the type of person that's going to buy your work? It becomes important because you want to know um, where they are, right? You want to know how they, how they spend their time. You want to know... Um, <clears throat> Where do, they do, where do they go for information? What kind of music do they listen to? If you, if, if you look at, say you go to a concert and you look at people in that concert, you can tell kind of, okay, this person is going to this concert specifically, or you know that you, you, you get a feeling for somebody but from the things that they like. Um, do they like to read? Uh, what does a typical day look like for them? Uh, <clears throat> I'll, I like the, what do they wish was different about their life? Because if you can speak to somebody about what they wish was different about their life and you can talk to them before they even know that you're talking to them, they're going to be very impressed with understanding that you are, you know them already. How many people have ever seen something and they're like, oh, they're talking to me, right? We've had that, that, that conversation or that seen an ad and it's like, oh, this is definitely, I, I definitely understand this, right? <clears throat> That's not by accident. Um, so these are all different client, client avatars or things that you think about in client avatars. There's so many more that you can think about. Like you can, you can try to flesh this out as, as much as possible. I know Laura, we've talked about your, you, when you found out or you realized who your client, you want to talk about that real quick? Yeah. So I was a sole painter and I created online courses and essentially my, my avatar is uh, like a retired woman who is likely out of the corporate world that spent a lot of her time and energy and really analytical, logical stuff, and now really is looking for an outlet to learn something new to get their life purpose now that they are retired. And so they're married, they own a home, yeah. they're likely above the age of 55. Um, they kind of suck at technology, which is a stressor for me <laughs> and at times. But like I can tell, I can answer you a lot of these questions about my education. What I'm struggling more is like my art. Uh -huh. I hope they have pets. <laughs> Did you find that out based on the signing up for your courses or buying your art? That and I was pouring a lot of energy into Instagram in my marketing, and like nothing was happening. Uh -huh. And then I started doing research, like way because on like Facebook versus Pinterest versus Instagram, and I was marketing to the wrong age. Absolutely, when I really started pushing Facebook, it like it changed. Yeah, and that's they're what on, they're on Facebook. Uh, right. Instagram. I mean, they are now, but like, no. yeah, five years ago was a different story. But like, yeah. And that's what um, I was leading up to is is <clears throat> once you understand this then you can go in and, and target your ads. Then you can go in and find where these people are. So there's a saying, um, 
instead of chasing butterflies, build a garden, right? And so if you understand what these people are looking for and who these people are, then you can get something that attracts them versus, versus chasing them. Your vision statement, where are you going with all this? So <clears throat> your vision statement is basically your, uh, your, your lofty goals, right? What if you if your business goes correctly for the next five to ten years, what is it going to do for the world? Right? So Charles Schwab's helping investors help themselves. Coastal creamery, cream, creamery, the ultimate ice cream experience. Disney doesn't have to be hard, make people happy, right? So it does not, your vision is basically what you want to see in the world, what you want your your business to bring forward to the world. <clears throat> so when you think about your brand, um, you don't have to reinvent the, reinvent the wheel. You can um, definitely look at what other brands are doing, right? Um, and you can look at strategies versus tactics. So Sun Tzu says, strategy without taxes is the slowest route to victory. Tactics without strategy is the noise before defeat. So if you're spinning your wheels and you're trying to put your, put your efforts in, in all these things and you don't have a strategy, if you don't have a direction um, that you created through your branding, through your, your, uh, your why, your mission statement, all these things, if you're just trying to, to pot shot these things or trying to, you're drawing at straws, right? And you don't necessarily know what's working or why it's working. And if you can create a, uh, a rubric as to why things are working, then it's much easier to course correct. And it's much easier to say, okay, I know that this is my client avatar, but like she said, they're not on Instagram, right? I know these are the people I'm trying to reach. So now how do I figure out how to get to these people? So <clears throat> when you do start to build your brand and start to understand your brand, um, this is an exercise that I like to take people through. Um, list five brands and why you like it, right? And so then you can see, then we can talk about why you like those brands. What are the strategies they got to get to you or the tactics they got to get to you? Um, what five brands align with your brand? <clears throat> what five brands do not align with your brand? So it's also very important to understand what your brand is not, right? Um, the most powerful thing you can say is no, <laughs> right? And, and, and if you are true to your brand and you understand what it is not, then being able to say no is actually a good thing, right? It's, 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 you're not wasting your time with people. You're not wasting your energy. You're not wasting any of this because you understand this is not for me, right? You, as a, as a business owner, you do have the power to say no. <laughs> and, and it, it feels really sucky to have to do something or do something that is not aligned. You're not aligned with, um, especially if it's for just for money, <laughs> that, that's never a good feeling. Um, so understanding, what you do not want is just as powerful as understanding what you do want. Can I build on that? Yes. There's a book called Essentialism. Uh huh. And it's a really quick read. There's a lot of pictures in it, which is always a good thing. But basically, it's all about like deciding what is essential, not only in your life, but in your business. And, and that's where you want to put your energy. You know, right. There's, there's a picture that is like a circle, and it's like your energy. And mm -hmm. when you're putting it out, and all these different things that don't really matter to you, but you're just doing it to do it, your energy is dispersed differently. And then when you figure out how you really want to spend your energy and where you want to put it, it's just one line going much farther. And right. So obviously, the artist, that was like an aha moment for me. Uh -huh. so I would highly recommend that book. It's really good. And a lot of us kind of aligns with that. Yeah. There's also, <clears throat> I, I don't remember the book. <clears throat> but one of the authors said, um, he basically asked himself two essential questions. What can I live with and what can I live without? Right, and if you, if you measure things by that, then it becomes a lot simpler. Like the, the idea of what can I live with? Can I live with this client? Can I live with doing this work? Can I live with this? What can I live without? Do, do I have to do this work? Right. Do it, it can I do can I live without doing this? Right. So once you start to get that in mind and understand that, then the stuff starts to fall in place. Um, <clears throat> you can also ask yourself, who is this for? Or to describe your business? 
um, what products are you selling, um, services you offer, where are you selling this? All these things matter. What do, uh, what do you do to make your clients love you? So those type of things, once you kind of, you kind of get those things in your head, it be, again, it becomes much easier for you to develop who your brand is for, where to put your products, how to, how to reach these people. How do you do the market research? <clears throat> this is a question I asked on my Facebook yesterday. <clears throat> what would make a service experience worth $1,000, worth thousands to you? So in my business right now, I'm trying to improve my um, client experience, right? And I want to know what would make it worth. Somebody I, I saw online the other day, somebody asked uh, the question. It was, um, how do they put it? If your brand or if your service costs 10, 10 times what you charge now, what would make it worth it? Right. And that thought was like, OK, what would what would make this a five thousand dollar service? What kind of experience would I have to provide for that? Right. And then they asked <clears throat> if your brand, if your service costs one tenth of what you charge now, what would what would that service look like and how would you make people make people love it? So those two questions together answer two things. How do I build client? How do I build my client uh, um, experience? And how do I make it scalable? So if you think about it in those terms, those two things are very important in business. And that again relates to the brand because the brand again is customer is customer experience, right? So I wanted to know. I want. I had this question. Um, I wanted to see what people said. I don't want to be in my own head because my own head is not necessarily. Um, First of all, I'm not my ideal client, <laughs> so I don't, I don't uh, want to think about what I think. I want to hear what other people have to say. So it's okay to ask questions. It's okay to go and if you have a client that you love to work with, take them to coffee. Say, hey, why, why did you, why did you hire me? Why did you do this? Why? What was going through your head? Um, how did this experience make you feel? What are some things that I can change? What are some things that you love? Blah, 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 right? So you're always trying to elevate your brand to that client that is your ideal client, right? <clears throat> so in a world where information is consistently flowing and, and the impressions are off, been made online, branding is no longer a luxury. It is a necessity. Your brand is your unique selling point, your digital calling card, and your passport to success in the modern age. I truly believe that if you create your brand correctly, it becomes a, a roadmap to a successful business. It becomes a, a guidepost. It becomes a sort of like a North Star. Anything that you do, do in that business, you can, you can compare to your brand and say, is this on brand for me or is this off brand for me? If it's on brand for you, Okay, great. If it's off brand for you, like let's say um, if you were doing, what were you doing? I'm sorry. What? No, right here. What was your business? Huh? I didn't, I didn't see anything about my business. Oh. What was your business? <laughs> oh, um, I don't know. Podcast. Okay, so in your, your podcast, the topics, right? Is this on brand for you? Is this is this topic about like will people be like, well, where did this come from? 
from, right? Or will they will they uh, enjoy the conversation? Or if in your podcast you're like, okay, so now I'm selling bread. Why are you selling? Like, does that make does this jive with your brand? Like, I don't know what your podcast is about. So I don't know, but but so it, it, if you really understand and really internalize all these things, it becomes a much easier conversation to have with yourself about what is on brand and what is off brand, right? And that could be yeah. What if made from bread is off brand, but she really wants to talk about it on the podcast? Is there do you like I mean then then if she really if she we're really start a red podcast on the side. <laughs> but if she really wants to talk about it, then it would be a portion of her why, right? And <clears throat> so let's say her why is about creating. And her why is about exploring things, right? If you are true to what you you're developing, and if you're starting with that why, then all your internal, your wants and your 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 internal like positioning will be on brand for you. You see what I mean? So it's not, it wouldn't be off brand for her. You know what I'm saying? So if her, uh, if you, See how you see how it works? Yeah, but what if like so you you you're branding yourself as a person and like you you grow throughout time, the, right? So, the, and then the, your brand more there's always course correction. Like I said, there's always course correction. And there's there's a thing called rebranding, yeah. right? That is a, that is a, a very leg legitimate thing. Remember when right. we made Chris so clear, Pessy? Yeah. <laughs> they out, right? They tried something and it didn't work. Right. Well, yeah, so, that's what we read, too, that it doesn't work. But it, it, yeah, you. you There's always still course correction, right? And there's always chances you can take. Pepsi, with the clear, they were still in the drink business. They just didn't understand that this was a gross drink, right? <laughs> so, excuse me. So they, um, yeah, it's it's still it's still a course correction, but it's still part of you, right? And if you are if you are really if you are really constructing this through your why, then and at some point that's going to come through. Does that make sense? So <clears throat> if you guys like, um, you can download my uh, uh, my workbook. Some of the slides are in there. Um, it's awesome. So, adding to my uh, email list. So you might get some information from me. Don't worry, I'm not a Nigerian prince. I will not uh, spam you. I'm not gonna. Trying to purchase a 
<laughs> is that the is that that's the scam so the scam i get um, we are having the i overpay you and i was in dollars throughout the day so i feel like unsuspecting people <laughs> any questions comments Eric Coleman. It took a while. Person that's playing and trying to figure out always evolving. Stone your laurel. Get out cool boys because cyclable with because sometimes reinventing the wheel that and do it different. When COVID hit in sale, and, and I was like, what are they trying to do? I'm still get you caught up in so for yourself, but then it's you can look at what their strategy might not work. So if you look at more stuff. You're not necessarily going to be targeting the, uh, the old lady that doesn't do. My mom. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to be targeting, but you can you can look at what she's doing and how she's targeting those people, and say, okay, how do I apply this to my client? How do I how do I decide? Like she might be on Facebook, but she might have to be on TikTok, and TikTok has a whole set of different rules and regulations and, and ways in which they interact with people. So you take. Her strategy, you apply your your tactics. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. 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 For sure. Yeah. Um, it's called Above the Mean, and essentially, it started off as me interviewing people who had different jobs outside of the 